The intention is to build a 150 person tribe. We started calling our tribe from every corner of the globe, people from New Zealand and Canada and America to be able to unite, to feel as if we could actually collaborate. A small group of people can come together and actually change the world. That it doesn't require all seven and a half billion of us to actually make a change. It only requires some of us to start seeding a new way, a new culture into the narrative. So my name is Marcangelo Coppola and I am a philanthropist and storyteller and big believer in our collective legacy in a movement towards what I would consider to be our individual freedom culture and our ability to unite through the power of storytelling to actually shift culture around the main challenges that we are facing on the planet today. Freedom culture is something I've been tracking for a very long time. Ever since I walked out into the middle of a GMO cornfield, planted a tree and decided that I would build the community and school I wish I could have gone to and grew up in, both physically and digitally. And one of the things that I started to notice is that over the years I built a global tribe, a tribe of amazing travelers, nomads, storytellers, alchemists, entrepreneurs, creatives, freelancers, people who are taking on the world's biggest challenges and really truly influencing the impact that those challenges could have. And I personally felt very, very, very called to unite the masters, unite the people who had put in the work, who were doing such amazing things all around the globe, but kind of still needed support. They needed people who were on their own level, people who could step up and be a part of something bigger than themselves. They needed a global tribe so that they can act locally as well and they can continue on the journey of taking on the world's biggest challenges in their own way. And so I decided to start a mastermind for the very simple fact that I felt lonely. I felt like I was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders and that I endlessly felt unfulfilled. I endlessly felt alone. I endlessly felt like if I didn't lead, who would? And so the spawning of this mastermind was to unite the leaders of the tribe in the same way that indigenous cultures would come together in peaceful ceremonies to continuously share offerings with one another, bring together and unite the forces of humanity with the global forces that we are experiencing in our world. Collective Legacy spawned out of a need and an understanding of what it would take to really thrive, not only today as individuals, but as a collective of people for the next seven generations to come. And so I felt called to support this gathering, this mastermind, this meeting of hearts and souls that happened here in New Mexico at Hummingbird Ranch so that we can we can really build trust, that we can really understand each other's perspectives, understand that there are many agendas that require serving and at the exact same time require us to unite, that all of these issues cannot be handled alone, that they have to be tackled as a collective, as a unified tribe. And so each of these events, each of these masterminds is a gathering that beyond the amazing follow-ups that each of us might have in our own businesses and our own movements and our own lives, but that we can actually build real collective community. And the intention is to build a 150 person tribe, not only of people who are transiently coming in and out or experiencing some kind of gathering from a more festive or celebratory type of way, but real members that are dedicated to serving one another, to hearing one another, to listening to one another, and to offering to one another in a way that is very profound. And I think every entrepreneur and every game changer needs to. So the legacy that we hoped that this event would bring was to bridge the worlds between these multiple generations and that actually absorb wisdom, not only from the influencers that are 
powerful on social media, but also the tribal leaders of many indigenous cultures, the leaders of eco-villages, the leaders that are doing everything from picking up a camera and telling stories to building new paradigms and new political parties, new laws that can attract all the things that we know are right in our heart, but that we don't yet feel have fully manifested in the world around us. And so we started calling our tribe from every corner of the globe, people from New Zealand and Canada and America, to be able to unite, to feel as if we could actually collaborate, to feel as if we actually have something to offer one another and to build this tribe and community in a way that was sacred, that was functional, that was intentional, and that allowed us to, to sync up, to hear a collective drum beat and allow us to dance to the same music. Can you tell me your personal thoughts and experiences of how the event went down? <laughs> Not gonna lie, the, <laughs> the beginning of the event was chaotic. Um, <laughs> for the most part, uh, I actually thought we were gonna fail. I actually believe that we had not done enough logistically. We had not pulled together enough in terms of uh, setting the container for us to really understand why we were coming together and why it was so important and sacred, why we really needed to be a collective and why maybe we would need to rally around a collective flag, collective values and a decentralized way of emerging. And um, let's just say, Emergence was was very very potent at this event. We were in a pure flow state um, Both in the most beautiful of ways and in the most frustrating of ways um, for the most part I felt uh, Like I was pushing up against my edge uh, and I think a lot of people felt that way I think we felt that way though because we really do want to unite we felt that way because we really do want to come together we felt that way because we really really feel the importance of this gathering and we didn't want to fail and through art and through listening to so many perspectives through listening to some of our elders from the many tribes of indigenous people that were at standing rock or that are suffering in their own ways we we really did unite we really did come together in a way that that none of us could have planned, that none of us could have put down on some spreadsheet or timeline or calendar that would have enabled us to have the heart opening experiences and the collective feeling that, that we all want, that we all needed. So in the end, I, I think this gathering more than it being so specific as to the actions that we needed to take, and we did get to those, it was also a, a healing of many of the wounds that we have um, that were not serving us, that were holding us back, that were keeping us playing small. And I know I felt that way. I know I felt that way for sure, that I was playing too small, that I somehow needed permission from others to build this tribe, that I somehow needed permission to lead, that I somehow needed permission to take on the world's biggest challenges, but need the validation of others to do so. And I think that's a cyclical thought that I've had that I was able to shed through this event and um, feel blessed in doing so. And I feel blessed that so many individuals and also organizations like this Guayaki and, and you know, OI Energetics and, and all the amazing, amazing collectives and organizations that rallied to give a small little piece to the tribe, provide something that allows this magical gathering to unfold. And somehow uh, this being our fourth event uh, that we've done through Superior Academy, or I guess the Freedom Culture movement, it, it just seems that every time we're, we're able to pull it together, every time we're on the edge of what is comfortable, on the edge of what is possible, and we always pull through and we always create this magical container that I've never seen or never experienced at any other conference or 
summit or honestly bullshit gathering that often is self-serving and really doesn't lead to a powerful unison as a collective. You know, most of these events that we see around the globe are, are focused on what I can get. What is the ROI that I can get and not the ROI that we can pull together. And I truly believe that when I turns to we, even illness turns to wellness. But as I turns to we, we, we are actually more empowered as individuals as well. But we have to trust that. We have to believe that. We have to allow space for that to flourish and happen. And, um, and we don't. We don't in our bubbles. We don't in our home environments often. And it's not to say that we don't have collectives or teams that we have back at home and our own individual pathways, but it is to say that sometimes, sometimes we're not considering the bigger picture. And I feel very plagued by the weight of that bigger picture, by the scale of some of the problems that inherently I cannot solve on my own. We must solve together. And I truly believe that a small group of people can come together and actually change the world. That it doesn't require all seven and a half billion of us to actually make a change. It only requires some of us to start seeding a new way, a new culture into the narrative. Um, and by putting that out on social media, by putting that out through a sacred container and space, we, we're actually doing the work. And, and I know that this event made me feel frustrated as if we weren't. In certain moments, I felt like we weren't getting anywhere. I felt like I was just getting frustrated and other people felt the same way. And I spoke up about it at the event in many ways. And, and ironically, as much as I would call this a mastermind, I believe that this gathering kind of spoke a lot more to the master heart and to the master soul side of, of the work. And so I definitely plan on, on continuing to lead with my gift, which is my ability to speak and understand and compute through my mind, but also my ability to lead through my, my gut, my heart. So I can speak for many. I'm feeling pretty inspired after this past event, but how can we translate, transcribe, integrate all of this wisdom and this collective and these new connections moving forward? What's step two? What's step two? Um, I think the first thing I'll say is I'm inventing it as much as anybody else, but I've definitely given it a lot of thought, maybe more so than others and maybe less so than some. And to me, step two is to build a, a collective of tools, of systems that we can use and come together and rally on and take collective steps to actually adopting those tools. Because many people in our own bubbles have created the solutions that we need, the technologies that we need to move forward as a global species and to align with the betterment of the planet and to tackling some of the massive issues that we are facing aren't just that we need to develop the understanding of these technologies or invent the companies that make these technologies, we actually have to adopt them. I mean, we all know that solar panels exist. We all know that eco-villages are out there. We all know the impact that we can have through voting with our attention. But we're not always doing it. And the advent of new systems and complete paradigm shifts that, you know, things like blockchain or holochain or cryptocurrencies can bring to the table are there. But we are always interfacing with them from an individual perspective. And we're all trying to bet on them by, by not being left behind, we almost adopt them through a fear of missing out versus a, a real rally and collective step that we would take. And so if a group of 150 people, for example, adopt a particular cryptocurrency or a particular ask offer system or a particular method of communication or a particular way of sharing each other's content and stories and efforts, that we can actually rally together. That we can actually build a culture where we are united and that is what is necessary. The technology is there, but we need to take it on. We need to adopt it. And, um, and there's no better way than to do that in a, 
and in one collective step to put up the flag of freedom culture and say that here is our collective rally, that this isn't about any one of us, that this is a, a common group of people who are dedicated, committed to abiding by some of the rules that we can take on. And I say rules in, uh, in a light way, but, but they should be rules. They are, they are energetic rules. And allow us to feel united. I'm watching this, and I'm, I'm on my mission. I'm, I know I want to make impact. Maybe I've already started making impact. What are the, what are two to three very clear, actionable ways that I can get involved, that I can be a part of this collective? So you might be at home watching this on your cell phone, laying in bed, or on your way to work. And whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're really feel like you're a master or you're just at the beginning of your hero's journey, the reality is that freedom culture is a collective flag. It's something that can be flown everywhere. It is not mine, it is not just our groups, but it really is something that unites us. Kind of like a rainbow colored flag or a Guy Fox anonymous mask. These symbols could display our, our support for this message. And every single day you vote with your attention. You watching this right now means that you are voting with your time, with the thing that is most valuable to you. And so what you click, what you like, what you buy, what you enable, what you support, inherently all of those things are how you participate in the greater system. Not the, just the system and the status quo, but the ecosystem of life. And so you being empowered with your own gifts, you stepping up into your own genius, you inherently giving that to the world and letting no fear stand in the way between you and sharing your highest excitement, your greatest gift, that is what freedom culture is about. To empower and encourage all individuals to spread their unique gifts to the world because in in that, you are giving a big middle finger to the status quo. You're giving a big middle finger to the things that you hate and opening up yourself to being of service for yourself and a greater mission, a greater vision that we all have. So fly the flag, like, comment, share, engage with the things that you really care about. Put aside the things that you know aren't serving you. Step out of the things that you know are holding you back and dare to dream, dare to find the effort, the, the line in which your comfort zone is, dare to seek that discomfort, step into the fear, and know that you will be supported not only by the universe and that hippy-dippy bullshit that comes with, you know, thinking that everything will happen in that way, but in, in some ways, it's really not hippy-dippy bullshit. In some ways, it's really true because, you know, what? the people who see you do that, weirdly enough, we're connected to you. Weirdly enough, us humans, just like the microbiology in the soil or the fungi of this planet and the clouds and the skies and, the, and all the things that surround us, we're all connected and we are here to support you. And there's so many organizations that are there to do it. Some of my own, some of those from the people behind the camera and the people out there in the world and all the people who are rallying at this event and the people who couldn't be there but were there in spirit. We are, we're here for you. We're here to catch you when you fall. We're here to support you when you feel down. We're here to listen to you when you feel afraid. And we're here to mentor you, to give to you, to offer to you, and to accept your offers and your unique gifts. You can be a part of this movement by just being yourself and bringing your highest excitement and gifts that you know build the world that is possible in our hearts. You could do that by being you. I kind of want to ask what the next three to six months look like for you personally? For me, the next three to six months 
looks like deeply setting myself into a position of leadership, understanding that my gift is to unify, to understand people's superpowers, and to build collective tools. I understand that um, I'm not the only leader in this movement, but I am one of them. I am capable of rallying a bunch of resources. And given that I've been living my own version of freedom culture as an individual for a long time, it is now time that I build the flag alongside my brothers and sisters who who are longing for it and who want to build it alongside me too and who need me to lead with my gifts. And so the biggest thing I can do is, is take my focus and attention and, and my feelings of scarcity that we all feel, even me, even you, no matter who you are, and step into the collective abundance that we have. And I know that this is the most important work. I know that this is upstream of building the eco-villages and the movements, the, the activism that people are doing on the streets, the front lines that are found everywhere, not just at Standing Rock, but in every single way because there are atrocities happening all over the planet. There are fights to be had everywhere, but we cannot fight just with our clenched fists. In fact, that's not where the fight is at all. The fight is with our, our collective actions everywhere we are, our voting with attention, our voting with what we truly are serving at every moment of every day. And, uh, and I believe we have that choice. I believe it's our dharma to step into our individual superpowers and be the best version of ourselves. To build a system of structural flourishing that erodes away through our own individual freedom and through our culture. It strips the status quo of its structural violence that it has enacted upon us unfairly throughout history and here today. Freedom culture means to me a sense of individual salvation to the suffering that I experience, even in my privileged position, even in the amazing life that I've had. I still feel challenges as an individual, as a collective. I still have a comfort zone. I still have an edge. I still have something that holds me back. And I still sometimes feel like I don't know where to go or what to do. And so my individual freedom from the status quo, from the system, from the things that the culture of today has embedded inside me, I get to shift that. I get to participate in building the next culture by telling stories, by building businesses and organizations that tackle the problems that matter to me. And if I do that and I trust that others are doing the same, then all the different challenges that the world is facing will be tackled because, well, we don't all love and we don't all get activated by the same forces. We don't all embrace the same technologies. We don't all embrace the same causes. But we inherently unite through our collective culture, through the values that we hold, and through rallying around a flag that we can believe in, not in just trying to tear down a system that we don't. We need something to unite around if we are going to build a new system. You know, Buckminster Fuller has an amazing quote, and I won't even tell you it because you already know it. But it really speaks to needing, absolutely needing a new system for us to adopt before we can ever step out of the old. And I believe it's not only my responsibility to build it, which is definitely what I've felt up until this point, but actually it could be my joy to build it. I can have fun, and gratitude, and, and feel awesome about it. And uh, for me, I have to balance my 
masculine and feminine energy, my, my give and do energy with my receive and be energy. And so that's the biggest shift that this event and many months of work have been leading up to and, and hopefully many more months after this will continue to uh, teach me, even as I forget it. But I definitely remember the, the feeling and I carry the energy of the feeling of these gatherings and it's it's the most powerful, most powerful work I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. Thank you, Yes Theory. Thank you, Guayaki. Thank you, Ohio Energetics. Thank you, Canon. <laughs>